our goal is to connect our site right to a custom domain. This means we'll add our domain, like whatever the name of your site is, .com, and we'll set it up so when someone goes there, your site loads perfectly. Now, just to make sure we're on the same page, this video shows how to update DNS for Bluehost. This should mean you bought your domain on or you transferred your domain to Bluehost. Okay, five steps here. We'll add the domain. We'll update our DNS settings on our registrar. We'll set the default version of our site. We'll set it to www. We'll verify it's working, and then we'll publish our site for the world to see. Let's start with adding. If we go to our project settings, let's head over to the right tab. Depending on the kind of workspace you have, it'll either say publishing or hosting. They both do the same thing. Once we're there, we can see that we can add a custom domain. If you don't see it at the top here, that's okay. You might wanna scroll down depending on how your workspace looks. All we have to do, type in that custom domain and add domain. By the way, what we're typing in, dellinghamdesign.com, it's fictional. We're using it as a stand-in, as an example. You should replace it with whatever custom domain you're using on yours. That's adding our domain. Now we have to tell our domain provider to point to this site. So when someone visits whatever the name of your site is.com, it actually serves up our site to them. Okay, in Bluehost, we want to navigate to domains and specifically my domains. From here, we can see our domain and we'll select manage. Once we're there, we can navigate to DNS. We'll find DNS from the tabs here. And if we scroll down, we can see we have our records. A quick note here, this may look different for you, Maybe you already have existing records in your DNS settings. We're about to add ours from Webflow in a second, but we first have to remove any conflicting records. DNS settings should always be backed up, so make sure to take a screenshot or another way of notating all these settings before making changes, just in case you have to revert. Now, before we add records, let's do a quick check to make sure of three things. Number one, backup. I know we said that a second ago, but writing down or taking a screenshot is a great way to revert changes if you need to later. Number two, if there are A records, any A records under this A section here that have a host record of at, we'll want to delete those. We want to remove them. We're going to add new ones in just a moment. Like we mentioned earlier, you might not see this. You could have a new domain or your configuration might be different. That's okay. Number three, if there are any CNAME records with www in front of your domain, again, you might not have any, but if you see any CNAME records with www at the front of your domain, we want to remove that as well. Remove any CNAME records with the www at the front of your domain. Let's quickly recap so that we're on the same page. Number one, backup. Take a screenshot or even multiple screenshots if it doesn't fit on the same page. Number two, Remove any A records with a host record of at. Number three, remove any C name record that shows a host record of www. Okay, for our records, just three things we need to do in DNS. The first two are A records. So let's navigate down to A. This is our A records section. For our first one, we can add our new A record. For host record, we can type in at. For points two, we'll go back and grab that value from Webflow. Back in Webflow, simply click on the value and it's copied to our clipboard. Back in Bluehost, let's paste that right in. For the TTL or time to live, we can leave it as is and it will automatically set a default value and save. Now for the second record, which is also an A record, we can add that second record. For the host record, we can type in at. And for points two, we'll head back to Webflow and copy our second value. We'll copy the second value to our clipboard and go back to Bluehost and paste it in. Leave TTL as is and save. That's two thirds of the work. For the last part of this step, we need to add a CNAME record. Let's scroll down to CNAME and add record. For the host record, we can type www. For points two, We'll head back into Webflow and copy the CNAME value. Back to Bluehost and paste it in from our clipboard. Leave TTL as is and save. And that's it for our DNS settings. Keep in mind, some providers propagate faster than others, so the time until this works through the internet may vary. 
It could take as long as 24 to 48 hours for everything to fully go through. But if you have any issues adding DNS records, you can always reach out via their support channels to get things cleared up. That's the most complex part. Should be smooth sailing from here. Let's move on to our default domain in Webflow. We're back in Webflow under the Hosting or Publishing tab. And in this case, we're going to go and set the www.dellingemdesign.com. We're going to set that as the default by pressing the little default thing here on the www option. So what does that mean? It means that if someone types www.dellinghamdesign.com, of course it'll take them to that site. But it also means if someone just types dellinghamdesign.com, they'll be routed directly to www.dellinghamdesign.com. That's it for step three. Step four, it gets even faster. We can go ahead and check the status of our domain. On our A record configuration here, let's press check status. And of course it works, it's connected. Again, it could take a few hours for domain changes to propagate or go through. Sometimes this isn't ideal. It's how DNS works on the web. If it does say issues detected on this one, give it a few hours and check again to make sure it's updated and is working fine. For us, it does say connected here. So we'll move on to the www version and let's press check status there. And it looks like both appear connected. Now, if you have any issues with this working properly, please check out Webflow University for the most up-to-date documentation on connecting your custom domain. But now that we're all done with setup and verification, we can move on to our last step, publishing. If we go over to publish, two options now. We see our staging domain, the webflow.io version, and we see our brand new custom domain. I usually publish to both. But if you wanted to use the staging domain for temporary testing, you could just publish to that one if you want to hold off on publishing to the main.com. And one note here, if we go to our project settings and go to the SEO tab, it usually helps to make sure we've switched this switch on so that subdomain indexing is disabled. That'll help prevent search engines from indexing your .com and your .webflow.io. It'll only index your main.com. But that's it for connecting a custom domain. We added the domain to our project settings. We updated our DNS configuration. We set the default domain to www. We verified it's working properly, and we published the whole thing for the world to see. That's connecting a custom domain in Webflow.